Well, come back and buckle up because this one is quite a story. An Adelaide couple is lucky to be alive this morning after they became stranded in the South Australian outback with no car, no phone, no food and no water. One wrong turn ended in catastrophe for this young couple. Jose, his fiancée Nikki and their pup Lockie were on their way home to Adelaide from Cairns when they got lost. Their car became bogged in the sand on a remote outback road. And after hours trying to free it, Jose and Nikki decided to set off for help on foot. The pair walked for 45 kilometres in 40 degree heat, leaving notes and scrawling SOS in the dirt in the hopes someone would find them. Then, after two days without food or water, salvation in the form of a mine worker who picked them up somewhere near Inaminka. Blind luck, given the worker only travels down that particular road once every six weeks. The good news is the couple were quickly transported to the local Royal Flying Doctor Service Base in Inaminka, where they were given first aid by nurse practitioner Chris Belshaw. And I'm happy to say that Chris joins us now from Adelaide. Chris, good morning, morning to you. What a story. What sort of a condition were this couple and, importantly, their pup in when they showed up? Well, it was a remarkable story. And remarkably, both of them were in really good condition. They were uh, picked up uh, that morning by Craig, who uh, gave them all the water that he had. So whenever they got to me a couple of hours later, they're actually well hydrated, mm. very emotional, very tired and fatigued. And, uh, and also, Loki, the dog, was unable to walk. He was just that exhausted. But for two young kids who were stuck out for so long in the bush, they were actually in remarkably good condition. Wow. What did they tell you about how they managed to survive those two very long days in the outback in what was, you know, very hot conditions? Uh, basically, they were trying to sort of walk as, as far as they could in the direction that they knew that Inaminka was in. Uh, but unfortunately, so some of the tracks are mining tracks, so they're not actually roads. Mm. So whenever they're walking around them, they're actually sort of doing little loops and oh. getting lost. Yeah. So to keep themselves going, they were drinking water that they could find in sort of you know, the, the cattle troughs that were around the place and drinking condensation that was coming off the solar panels from some of the well sites. So it was a remarkable sort of story of resilience, just how they actually sort of kept each other going for those two days without seeing anybody yeah. until Craig arrived and, and really saved them. I want to ask about that because most people would remember what it's like navigating with the map and the kind of uh, mm. conflict that mm. can cause if there are wrong turns taken. Now, that would only usually cost you five or ten minutes. This has cost them two days being lost. How were they and how were they going towards each other by the time <laughs> they arrived? They were really, really good. They're a very uh, tight-knit couple and they really sort of, you know, looked after each other and kept each other going. Jose was sort of, you know, really sort of, you know, trying to sort of, you know, lift uh, Nikki up and, sort of, you know, and push her forward to keep her going. And uh, the two of them managed to survive due to good resilience mm -hmm. and uh, a really good sort of, you know, relationship. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, I think they're engaged to be married. Yeah. I, that is the greatest test that they could ever have faced in the lead up to, uh, to marriage. It is nothing yep. short of a miracle that this remote worker you mentioned happened to find the pair. He very rarely is on, is on that track. He just happened to be there right, uh, in the right place at the right time. Do you think Jose, Nikki and, Lock and Loki are the luckiest bunch in Australia? Would they have survived if he hadn't found them? Uh, to be honest, if we had the normal temperatures for that few days that we have in November and uh, December, where we normally get 45 plus yeah. degrees, uh, they would have perished. I believe they would have perished. Luckily, those days, it was only something in the high 30s, so uh, they were able to sort of, you know, survive a little bit longer. But I think Craig will be on their Christmas card list for the rest of their lives okay. because he really did save their lives. If they hadn't, he hadn't come across them and stopped and rendered first aid, then I don't think they would be here now. Yeah, forget the Christmas cards. Make him best man at the wedding. <laughs> Good time then. Uh, Chris, uh, border Absolutely. closures. You mentioned that the temperatures and the heat. There are border closures right across Australia at the moment as well. It's encouraging or f forcing more Australians to head to roads that aren't travelled or roads they may not have travelled on before. What's your advice to people that are heading out so they don't end up in a similar situation to Jose and Nicky? We're actually seeing more and more tourists at this time of year, which is unheard of. Normally, we don't see people sort of travelling through the outback, you know, after the end of October. Uh, but now, sort of more and more people, sort of with the border closures, are coming through remote outs, outback. So, 
I say journey management is probably the, the important one. Let people know where you're traveling, what route you're taking, and have regular check-ins with them so they know that you're going to call them every night at a certain time when you reach your destination. Mm. Phone ahead, let the authorities know where you're coming from, where you're going to. Uh, if you're going to be staying at a campground or a pub, phone them up, let them know what time to expect you. So if you don't turn up, then they can send out the search parties. I, I, Make sure that your vehicle that you're traveling in is fit for the, the, the job, mm. that you've actually mm. got enough spares, enough you know, tools with you to dig yourself out of, tr out of trouble that you've got enough water for at least four days. So we look at at least five litres per person per day. Mm. That's your emergency backup. A little bit of food, some snacks, a first aid kit. And most importantly, if you do break down, stay with your vehicle. Yeah. You've done your journey management. You know that so often your people are expecting you. They know what route you're taking. So if you break down, stay with your vehicle because we can find the vehicle on the side of a road, even if you're bogged. If you leave it and wander off, you're very, very hard to find from the air when we're looking for you. It is not so for stay the with your vehicle and you'll be rescued. It's not for the faint-hearted out there, is it? And this is a wonderful reminder of the crucial work that the Royal Flying Doctors Service provides in remote areas like yeah. this. Um, so well done to you, well done to Craig, um, and well done to Jose and Nikki for staying together after that extraordinary yeah. test yeah. on their relationship. We really appreciate your time this morning and thank you very much uh, for joining us, Chris. Just ahead on the program, a vaccine rollout delay, which could cost lives, apparently. The ominous warning that's coming towards our government this morning. Plus, the final week.